Uh, well, the first thing that happened was when I was in the primary school. Um, I did. I used to do little patterns, all in systematic order. And um, one day, I took it into the teacher, and she actually put one of these patterns on the wall. I must have been only about six or seven. And um, every day, I took in a different pattern, and because there's so many patterns being put on the wall. I used to, each evening, I used to try and dream up another one and different colours and different shapes and things. And I can remember having at least 37 patterns on the wall before they actually took them down. And I went to the Wellingborough Technical Grammar School. Well, I used to paint the teachers behind their backs. <laughs> so we would be in English or in mathematics and then I'd have my pen and pencil down here and I'd be sketching them. Um, but unfortunately I now and then used to get caught out um, and it began to show that um, I had a bit of a talent there and um, so I was always topping art. This was done when I was um, 15, 14, 15. Um, I was at school and um, I think the art teacher had a, a model come and it was called The Tall Lady because she was so tall. Um, I felt like chopping some of the picture off because um, to me she was too tall with a long dress but then was I, I left school and um, I left school to go to college and I actually got a place in college foundation in art um, without even taking any exams um, I just remember on a windy day taking a canvas uh, to the college um, it was back of a tennis course or something like that which I'd only just started and they just said we'll take you and I was kind of led astray I suppose so, um, unfortunately, I went and got married against my parents' wishes completely. People pulling me all different ways and telling me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. Um, obviously, I felt that I loved this guy, um, so that was pulling me in one direction. Um, I'd had a child as well. And then was, um, basically, it was a simple accident. I got up in the middle of the night and walked through one door and out to the nurse's room. Um, I heard footsteps in the middle of the night. I couldn't walk properly because of my pelvis. Turned around quickly and was electric far behind the guard, without a guard, and uh, burnt my hands. Um, and then that led me to be in Stoke Mandeville Hospital for three years having skin grafts, um, which obviously set me back. I couldn't go to college then. Had to even learn to write again. And so I was looked after because I needed help. Um, my dad cared for my hands and things like that. But. Um, and my, my, my first child was being fostered at this time. But as I got better and better and better, um, I felt quite guilty that I had a child, um, somebody else was looking after them. Um, and although I wanted to get on with my life, you know, I had this guilt thing that I should. And really, it was quite a shock for my parents when I turned around and told them that I, I want to, you know, pursue a family life and see if that would work. Um, it, I felt as though there was a pulling towards Bournemouth. I didn't realise it at the time, but all my ancestors actually came from Bournemouth and used to live in Bournemouth. And my father, when he was a young boy, used to live in Shaw Road in Sandbanks. Um, so, um, so I came down here and at the time, I felt I was going to go into my art, but I went along to the job centre with not a clue. I mean, I could even just about hold a pen at that stage. Um, and I didn't have a clue about what kind of work I do, only that I was good at art and I like languages. So I went along to the job centre in Wellington, North Fans. This was actually before I moved to Bournemouth. And um, they took all the details and I'd got eight O levels and some qualifications from school. And they're quite surprised that I wasn't working, but obviously I gave, told them all the details about my burns. And um, within about an hour, they'd phoned me back and said, why don't you come work here? I, I'd got divorced. I'd be, sold a house. Uh, my children had grown up a bit more then. So just started to have a little bit more extra time on my hands. And my mother kept asking me to do a portrait for her of a tiger. She loved tigers. And I didn't really take much notice of her to start with. But she kept on mentioning it, and then she mentioned it again and again. So I thought, oh, I'd better do, do one for her birthday. And I got my oil paints out, and the smell of the turps just took me back years and years ago. Um, just that feeling every time I open a, a new bottle of turps. And I, I, I put brush to 
canvas and did a painting for her of a tiger and she put it in a hallway. But that, after doing that, I didn't stop. But I was always, always wanting to go into conservation of animals, like David Shepherd. This was what I wanted to do when I was, was very young. And because all the health problems um, stopped me doing what I wanted to do. Um, but uh, later on, um, I found that I could start painting animals. And, but I was struggling because I hadn't been to Africa. And if you paint something, you need to know about the habitat, you need to know about the atmosphere, how it looks out there. And I've got this yearning, I've got to go out there. If I want to paint animals, wild animals, then I need to go out there. Um, so I um, met my next door neighbour, and everything was much more stable then. Uh, he helped me with support, and um, we uh, decided to join Marwell, which is the art society there, and I used to go around the zoo quite a lot as well. And then the trip came up to Botswana. One thing that you notice, and you even notice it when you're back here, if you've got some clothes from there, is the beautiful smell, the essence of the ground, the elephant dung. I don't know what it is, or the herbs, or but the atmosphere itself just smells completely different. And from that, you know, I just couldn't stop painting wildlife then. I was sketching and painting non-stop when I got back.